Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Um, today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk around my yard and kind of give you an idea of what it looks like at this point. I gotta get my boots on. I also wanna show you what I need to take care of and what I haven't been able to take care of that I'm gonna have to wait till next spring to do. So that's what's in for today. I really hope you enjoy this and let's just get started. So as always, I'm going to start from my driveway side and work my way over this way as I do with every garden tour. So with that, you guys, I'm going to turn the camera around and then we'll go from there. As you can see, my hot lip Sylvia on this side is still blooming. I actually ended up cutting that back quite a bit this year because it got more sun than it normally does. So therefore it's going to grow much larger as I mentioned uh, in other videos. So uh, yeah, and so that's doing really well. Actually, everything here is doing really well. My Texan Eporium over here is doing better than it ever has. I cut off all the dead stuff earlier in the season and that's just standing really pretty. All of my daylilies, surprisingly, are still really green. For this late in the season, this is the first time it's ever stayed this green. My red valerian right here, this one here is done blooming. And one thing about this uh, plant, it just is a long bloomer. I love a lot of things about uh, red valerian, uh, Jupiter's beard. The only thing is that you do need to cut them back down about two to three inches in zone 8B, because if you don't, uh, and you wanna do it in the fall, because if you don't, it's just going to uh, flop down and then rot, and then your plant may not um, come back the following year. So it's always a good idea to trim it. I did trim this last year, as you can see right here. Do you see those little uh, stumps there? Yeah, so that's where I cut them. I cut them pretty low, but typically in the fall, you just want to do it about two to three inches uh, from the ground up. Now in the western regions, you do want to trim it back, but you want to wait for mid-spring to do that. Here in the Pacific Northwest, because we get a lot of rain, it doesn't handle it very well. And I don't want to lose them because if you deadhead them, they will continue to bloom. And that's one thing that I love about this. And they're just absolutely beautiful. And you can let them uh, seed out. If you have an area big enough, you can let them seed out and just have a ton of them, or you can easily just pull them off the ground because they're like basically rake it and they'll come out. It's that easy. In this side, my red valerian is doing still well, still blooming, but uh, it's coming to the end of its season as well. And these propagate so easy. So having them cut down is not hurting them at all. They're pretty resilient, but again, they do need to cut, be cut back. Then I have my Hanakoa over here, which is looking pretty amazing. Um, and just gonna look even better every year going forward, cause it's just gonna fill in and drape over this stones really beautifully. So my Jack Frost over here and my Jack Frost over here, these two, are one of my pride and joy plants for any yard because these will come up early in the springtime and they will stay forever until the first very, very hard frost. Once that very first hard frost knocks them down, they're pretty much down for the rest of the season, but they're almost only down for like maybe a month or two and then they're back up. So these are very long lasting plants and one that I would highly recommend for any yard. They're not toxic to um, animals. I believe they're deer and rabbit resistant. So I really love these for that reason. My hot lips over here is doing wonderful. Look at how big that is. And I actually trimmed it back once this year already, maybe even twice. And it's still flowering, still doing beautiful. My Japanese maple here has not lost its foliage. It ha it's just starting to turn like that deeper red, but for the most part, it looks just as good as it ever has. 
and I'm really kind of pleasantly surprised because these are typically getting pretty stripped down by this time of the year. And uh, yeah, so I don't know what's going on this year, but uh, some things are really taking off and doing great and lasting a lot longer than normal. And yet our temperatures have gone down a lot sooner too. So I don't know. We'll see what happens with this. And then my day lily over here, again, my day lilies on both sides, I am just beside myself as to how green they are because by this time of the year, they're pretty much stripped away from a lot of the foliage and just having a few stems up. So I have this mums here that I've had it in the same container and it's got a ton of blooms on it. And uh, it gets a little bit more shade right where it's at and so it hasn't completely come out um last year it did about the same and then it just didn't really fully bloom but uh we'll see we'll see what happens with that and then of course i have a little bit of uh, lamium over here that's going to drape down beautifully my uh two president clematises over here you know these i really felt short on cutting them back i really should have cut them back down about to here and i didn't do it and if i don't do it it's going to be something that i'm just gonna have to wait until spring but it's still going strong it is pretty weathered by now and obviously stopped blooming but yeah i gotta get to uh trimming it down within the next week or i'm just gonna have to leave it because uh don't want to damage this one for sure my succulent, my succulent over here, which this is a uh, stone crop sedium, and this one, for some reason, it is getting really tall, but it's doing really great. This one can stand all kinds of weather. It can stand ice on it, and it'll survive perfectly fine. Doesn't damage it whatsoever. On this side of my garden, everything is still looking wonderful, but look at my mom's. Look at how gorgeous that mom's is. Isn't that just a beautiful rustic color? I absolutely love it. This is the most that this has actually bloomed in the last um, three, four years that I've had it in the same pot that I purchased it in. And I put it here last year and it's just loving it. So it just looks like this beautiful bouquet and I, I really like it. Now, this one gets ice and snow as well. It stays evergreen and it's just really a tough plant in my opinion. Here is my spider wart that I planted. It's doing wonderful, staying evergreen. So that's really nice. And then my ruby slipper over here is uh, done blooming for the season. As you can see, all the flowers are dried up. I leave them for the fall just because it gives good winter interest. Uh, the leaves are now starting to just start turning their colors for uh, fall, but quite a bit of a green foliage still, but that's looking absolutely beautiful. And then everything else here still has a lot of color, a lot of great things going on, haven't died down at all. This is my snow sickle, uh, oak leaf hydrangea, this one here. You know, the flowers are done, but isn't that just beautiful for fall colors? And just to uh, have that winter interest, I really love it. And then right below it, I have my Japanese maple. This is a dwarf Japanese maple, and it is already done uh, losing all of its leaves. I think there's a few still kind of hanging on, but for the most part, it is done for the season. And I'm actually surprised that this one lost all its foliage, but the other ones, are still hanging on but this is one of my favorite ones i've had it here for years and uh yeah and i think it's only grown like maybe two three inches at the most in the last uh 12 years but i i still love it this here needs to be planted this is a prince calico aster i don't know how well you can see that there you go and I do need to plant that and water it. I will be putting in this pot. Then right here is where this garden here is uh, at right now. Everything is going dormant as it should. 
Hi, Barney. Hi, baby boy. Hi, baby. How my baby doing? Huh? Anyway, as I was mentioning, um, everything here is now going dormant, but it looks still gorgeous. My bee balm, look at the bee balm. Look at the leaves on that and how beautiful that color is. I absolutely love that. And of course, uh, these can be topped off, but I like leaving them for the birds and just having some winter interest there. This one's still looking absolutely gorgeous. Nothing is going on with that other than May. Oh, now you can see the bloom on this a little bit better. Look at this. So it did kind of bloom. So this is pretty much the way this flower looks. It's very green around it on the tips. And then it's got this pink. And then it's got this really beautiful sea head. Isn't that just gorgeous? I cannot wait to see it in full bloom next year. And then over here is my kiss man. I have one flower left, but everything else has gone to uh, pretty much seed. So I'm just going to let it do its thing, let the birds eat off of that. Butterfly uh, skipper over here is done for the season, and so is this double cone. Uh, oh, excuse me, I, I switched them. This is my uh, double cone. And this one here is the butterfly skipper. And it still has a few blooms left, but for the most part, it's done. What are you eating? What are you eating over here? What you eating? Don't eat stuff. <laughs> uh, my fuchsia over here, I cut it all the way down to the ground because it needed it in the springtime. And so I got nothing but new wood. And so this year, I'm gonna leave it as it is. I may trim back some of these long stems here and then maybe top it a little bit uh, for the rest of the season, but I'm gonna leave it to see how well it stands up for next year uh, coming in to the spring with, uh, which will now be old wood next year. So that's still beautiful. It bloomed beautiful this year and I can't be happier with it. All of my dahlias over here are doing wonderful. Uh, they are getting a little weathered, as you can see, but isn't this gorgeous? And I'm going to leave them in the ground and see what happens because um, I've left them in the ground for several years now, especially my bishop dahlia over there and these ones as well. I've left them in the ground and so I just throw mulch over them and um, we'll see having them in this new space here to see how they do. But I think I'm going to, I'm going to let them go and let them do their thing. I do need to deadhead a few of them. Uh, but uh, outside of that, you know, they're doing really well. My Boulevard Clematis over here, it is continuing to bloom. And this just gorgeous? Look at it. It still has two more buds to bloom, but this is a beautiful Boulevard Clematis, and I absolutely love it. I think the neighbors are enjoying these a little bit more than I am because they are pointing more towards their side, but that's okay. You know, if, as long as it blooms, that's all that matters. I never got any new blooms off of this chest of daisy after uh, trimming it, um, but I'm glad that I trimmed it because as you can see, the stems are very hollow, so I don't want to lose it so i'm glad that i did it when i did it uh so it could heal over but it do look like i have some uh, buds but it just really never has done anything my spider wart that i planted here is doing wonderful that is going to look really beautiful next year over on this side this is my purple heart uh transanthia and this look at the bloom on this this really bloomed for me this year. It, it, you know, if you didn't know that I had just planted this, you wouldn't even know that this was a new plant. But this has gotten so big over the whole summer and it's just going to be beautiful. Now this is a, a hot climate plant, but it's a very drought tolerant. And so far with the previous uh, purple heart that I had 
they have weathered ice and snow. So this year, I'm not gonna trim it. I'm gonna just let it be and see what happens next spring. My Bishop Dahlia over here has some bloom still, but it's pretty much done for the season. It's just starting to go into dormancy. And I do need to thin this one out though, uh, really bad. So I will be doing that uh, probably in the springtime. And then, um, Here's my other Japanese maple, and this one's starting to get red because this is the color, fall color, and then eventually it will lose its leaves. Uh, so probably around uh, uh, middle of uh, November is probably when that's going to start happening. Let me back up a little bit. I do need to cut this butterfly uh, shrub that's becoming a tree and I am going to be cutting it right across here and that uh, hopefully will survive again next year but it's done blooming all of my helleboras over here even my coral bell over here is looking beautiful and uh, yeah these are all looking really nice and perky because they are getting ready they're getting for winter and for those blooms come next spring. Yeah, so I'm excited about that because during the whole summer long, they really don't look all their best, but around this time of the year, they just start looking beautiful. I love it. Uh, let's see, never got any more blooms off of my Picolores hydrangea over here, but it's getting full and looking gorgeous. I love it. Uh, my rose bush needs to be pinned up again. It looks like it's uh, falling short. I did uh, trim all of this, uh, as much as possible of this holly. I've got a big, in fact, this right here, these right here are holly trees. And so I need to actually cut them down because I don't really get any berries on them and they just leave a mess. And so, yeah, all of my hostas are now starting to uh, die back. And, and of course, this one here, I don't know, it gets attacked so badly that I may just uh, pick it up and move it somewhere else. Uh, but this one, yeah, it just gets demolished with the snails and slugs. And I just don't stay on top of it as I should. Um, my spot on I, those are starting to perk up, looking beautiful for spring flowers. My garden that I planted over here, everything is looking beautiful, uh, but going dormant. And again, this one has been attacked as well. So it's time to start cutting back on all of my hostas. This one is, uh, this Jupiter's beard here is still blooming. My grape hyacinth over here, that one will look like this until spring and then it'll get all of its beautiful purple flowers. Can't wait. Uh, let's see. And then over on this side, as you can see, my hosses are starting to uh, break down and it's just that time of the year for them. So I will be uh, topping all of those up. And then I planted uh, a few plants over here. This one here is actually an euphorbia. It's a bonfire. And this has beautiful uh, winter interest. And unfortunately, uh, I didn't plant it in time, so it didn't get as big as it should have. But next year it will, it'll fill out. And this is just a small uh, euphorbia. It only grows let me look at the tag here and I'll give you what it's zoned from uh, five to nine and um, it only gets up to 18 inches wide and 10 inches tall. You might not be able to see that clearly, but uh, yeah, this is a great plant, one that you could put in the forefront, but you see how it's got just a little bit of hint of red in it. In the fall, all the leaves turn a bonfire red and that's why it's probably called bonfire. But uh, I didn't plan it in time for it to grow enough. So, but next year. Then I have all my hostas again that are starting to 
them to go dormant. Uh, these sediums over here, they didn't completely bloom, but look at how gorgeous that is. You know, a little bloom is better than no bloom. And this actually looks really beautiful for fall, if you ask me. Now, if these were put in the sun, they would have bloomed and just look gorgeous. But you know what? I'll take what I get. And then again, here's my other pasta that really needs to be clipped down eventually. Um, I need to cover my flowering maple over here. I will be maybe clipping some of these uh, stragglers and then covering it up really well and see what happens over the winter months. Uh, this, again, is somewhat protected up here from the eave and it, it is also protected from my butterfly tree. And it's protected enough that it stays a little bit out of the elements. But when this gets weighed down from rain and snow and ice, this will flop over. So I need to cut a lot of this out as well and then just start carving these branches off uh, because this whole branches here are, are dead, essentially. But yeah, I'm going to cover this up with a nice warm blanket and yeah, just uh, really try to protect it this year. But it's getting bigger and bigger every year. So loving it. But everything in this side of my garden is doing really well. Then over here, my winter clematis, I just need to clean it up a little bit, but it's doing fine. So that's gonna conclude my front and side garden as much as I'm going to show. Let's go in the backyard and show you what's going on over there. This is kind of like a Japanese grass. I can't remember the exact name of it, but this always looks horrible in the summer months, but look at how it looks during the fall. It just looks beautiful and I love it. So. I really like this time of the year for that reason. This container here looks the best it's ever looked and I have not replanted it. I have done nothing to it. I, I, outside of, let me retract that because I did put some Creeping Charlie right in here and look at how gorgeous that looks amongst the pop like oregano. It just looks really beautiful with it and I am so happy that I put that in there. And then I have another ephobia here, blackbird uh, ephobia. This is also kind of a, a dwarf ephobia. It's looking absolutely gorgeous for fall. This is kind of it going into its fall colors and it's just gorgeous. And then I have a delphinia over here and it's just looking amazing. I just absolutely love this container. And I, again, didn't replant it at all this year. Then over here, I have some Italian thyme. I have some uh, other different types of thyme here. And then a little bit of, uh, I believe this is, uh, is this oregano or is this? Yeah, oregano. You know, oregano and parsley look so, so similar. So yeah, this is oregano, Italian oregano. And uh, yeah, those are doing really wonderful. My uh, chocolate Persian Lysimechia over here, it was really doing horrible, as you can see all this. And uh, I thought it was just going to be gone for the rest of the season, but it's doing beautiful. It really recovered all the dust and stuff that I put on it when I was doing some sanding over in this area. And it looks absolutely beautiful. I do have some chives on the top. Uh, let's see, my containers up here are doing absolutely gorgeous. Look at how beautiful they are. Now, I did lose one of my uh, uh, Dysandras over here, but everything else seems to be doing really, really great. Uh, and to be honest with you, I haven't even hardly been watering this, but my geraniums, look at how beautiful my zonal geraniums look right there. And then my sediums, my sediums are doing really great. And so, yeah. Everything is doing wonderful in this container and I'm really happy with it. So right here I have in this container, I have a star jasmine and this is really feeling out. This area right here gets a lot of shade. So for this to have filled out and looking as beautiful and climbing up this post, uh, this well is amazing and I'm really happy about it. Over here I have a, a moonlight Chinese 
fairy bell and this one didn't bloom for me this year i was really hoping to see some blooms but it looks happy still and it's doing well so if it's happy that's all that matters to me i still love the foliage it really reminds me a lot of uh a uh, hosta and i just think it's gorgeous and it just looks like a little fairy tale doesn't it and then this that you see right here is a creeping charlie that one's doing fine i did end up losing my victoria lady fern which was very saddening for me i do have a flamethrower coleus over here that i looks like i need to water and it looks like maybe the squirrels were digging in here uh but yeah that container i'll kind of redo it next year but for now it looks fine happy with it still and everything here all of my coles over here and all of my coral bells are doing fantastic and uh of course all of my coleses are taking over the hostas over here as you can see let me see if i can squeeze in but they're the hostas are still doing really well the coral bells are also getting covered over here but they're still doing beautiful and yeah i didn't expect this coleuses to get this big and then i do have another flamethrower over here and that's doing well and then i have a small hosta here that's going dormant and so yeah still loving this corner i mean i waited for so long to plant in here and i'm just loving how beautiful this looks then over here i have a couple of different italian um, basil and i will be harvesting those really soon and then i'm going to be freeze drying the leaves that way i have some seasoning some basil seasoning for my italian cooking so that's where that is and uh, not a whole lot got put over here as you noticed in my previous video i enclosed all these and water does filter through these so i'm not too worried about water not getting in there and the reason why i left the tops open like that is that that way water can drizzle in there as well because water is not going to filter through the sides so for that reason i decided to go ahead and leave an opening in the top part of it but let me show you now that this is starting to really bloom look at how beautiful that is that is a beautiful beautiful mums i'm sure it can handle the winter uh, weather because my other ones do but i'm going to try to protect it regardless then over here i have my uh pentacle hydrangea that i propagated that's looking wonderful has a lot of winter interest uh over here is again this is a another uh, flowering maple and that is needing some trimming and actually prompting up because it really is a vine and uh as you can see i'm getting ready to put my canvas walls up on this side of my garden i'll just do a quick rundown uh it looks like uh everything is doing really well my california lilacs doing beautiful my lilies over here never bloomed i did end up losing my magic uh carpet spirea over here which was uh, really sad, but that's just what happens, uh, especially because I have this very tall uh, eucalyptus tree over here that just really throws a lot of leaves down. And I think it's just too acidic for this area. I need to actually test the grounds and see w what the soil has or doesn't have, and then just feed it accordingly. My um, oregano hop like is still doing really well uh, i will be pulling that out and putting it in a container though for next year both of my uh, lavenders are doing really well they're done for the season i do need to clip those back my russian sage doing well and then i over here i have some parahibis this is a purple mist parahibi i have three of them that i planted those are looking really beautiful and then uh, i did plant quite a bit of shrimp but it looks like the chickens are really trampling over that but you know what that's okay if i get any they'll reseed next year and that's fine my uh pot of gold over here 
needs to be clipped down for the season. I actually need to deadhead all these. I mean, I can leave them for winter interests as well, which is all of my Echinacea and my Black Eyed Susan, uh, and have them reseed. I can do that, uh, but I may clean it up for the rest of the year. Clean up my yarrow over here. It's still blooming, but I, I think I'm gonna clean it up. I need to cut back this hot lip sylvia. It is just out of control because my spider lilies underneath it never got to bloom this year. So I may even change that out next year. Uh, we'll see. Over here, I have a broom track. Look at how gorgeous, and it is still doing beautiful. But it is starting to go into uh, going dormant. But I love the color that this one brought in this year. You typically broomstrucks are a variegation in color. And broomstrucks, you really don't need to trim them. You can deadhead a lot of stuff, but you really don't need to uh, actually cut them back and prune them because they grow from new wood as well as old wood. So you can actually leave them. I always just cut whatever dead limbs and I have pruned it back several times, but this year I'm gonna let it do its thing. And then um, my coral bells are still looking beautiful and uh, all of my hostas are still doing beautiful. I actually ended up getting some blooms off of both of my Nellie Moser and my uh, uh, Elsa Splath over here. And uh, they're done for the season, but I actually did get a couple of blooms as you can see so i was really happy to see that even cutting it down that um i got some blooms so i will cut them down again so that they can thicken up in the bottom and then over here everything is doing really well my coral bell over here that i moved is looking beautiful my hostess will soon be dying down uh, my blue angel over here i still have one spring left i'm gonna go ahead and leave that alone see what happens next year but uh yeah things are looking great um my kona uh grass is still doing well my uh st john's wort is doing really well need to trim that a little bit this lily oh my god i just don't know what happened to it but i've got a lot of new starts so i may just cut it way down and start over or just see what next spring brings but yeah lost a lot of that and it was such a shame because that was one of my most pride and joy plants too uh let's see oh i ended up with more um mums over here i thought these were spring flowers but that they turned out to be beautiful mums look at how gorgeous that is and absolutely love it uh both my clematis i'll just bring you really far out uh both of my star jasmine on both uh posts and the clematis the tingy clematis are done for the season but the star jasmine stays evergreen so i will never lose uh, foliage off of that i have uh, rock rose and this one's still doing gorgeous and does need a little uh, topping and rounding off but still doing fantastic let me show you one last thing before i let you go let's come up here look at i still have strawberries coming up and uh yeah everything that i that i planted in here is still uh coming along just great i'm gonna bury this here as we speak just so that it can grow another strawberry I did leave my uh, Caesar salad go to seed, so I may get some Caesar salad over here. But everything up here is getting ready for winter, but looking still wonderful. My rose bush is done for the season. Uh, my creeping thyme over here is still doing really wonderful. But look at these strawberries. Look at how many strawberries I have. This is fantastic. I should put that in the dirt a little bit there we go okay you guys that's gonna do it for me i really hope you enjoyed this fall tour i'm really amazed at how gorgeous everything still looks but i still have some work to do so i'm going to get started hopefully before we get our really hard frost because we are already at that time of the year so 
with that, you guys, I will see you guys next time. I love you. I appreciate you. And thank you so much for being here today with me. Okay, you guys, don't forget to get up, get out and get active. Enjoy your beautiful days that you have. And if it's chilly in your neck of the woods, just put on a scarf and bundle up and go for a walk. Okay, you guys, see you next time.